Counterterrorism forces have descended on a small town after police discovered a couple unconscious this on Saturday. The location, interesting here, just 10 miles from where UK authorities believe Russia poisoned a former Russian spy and his daughter with a military grade nerve agent in March. CNN's Aaron McLaughlin joining us now with news on this story of evidence of a connection. What can you tell us? That's right, Jim. Well, we were just hearing from the assistant commissioner uh, for the counterterrorism police uh, for Scotland Yard, uh, confirming that this couple uh, that have been identified uh, not by name, but as a couple in their 40s uh, by authorities to have been exposed to the nerve agent Novichok uh, earlier in the week. Now, that is significant because that is the same nerve agent that uh, the Skripals, Sergei Skripal uh, and his daughter Yulia, uh, were poisoned with some four months ago in Salisbury, which, as you mentioned, is about nine or ten miles away from this tiny English village. So authorities simply just confirming that uh, based on detailed tests that they've been carrying out throughout the day. The question really at this point is how did this couple, which has again not been named by authorities, but identified in British media reports as 45 year old Charlie Rowley and 44 year old Don Sturgis, how did they come into contact with this deadly nerve agent? Well, just incredible news there. Uh, this was a really shocking attack that the UK and the West blames on Russia uh, when this former Russian spy and his daughter were poisoned in March. Uh, we have Phil Mudd with us now. Uh, this is truly remarkable. I mean, you have a number of scenarios here. The possibility that, that Russia used this uh, very rare, very deadly nerve agent again. Why this couple? Who knows? Was it accidental? Uh, as you're looking at this from your perspective, long uh, service and counterterrorism, what possibilities would UK authorities be looking at? There's two things I'm thinking of. First, in the short term, you look at the amount of data you should be able to pick up here. Number one, obviously, who are these people? Would there be any reason for a foreign or domestic service to try to kill them? What is the agent? Who would have the access to that agent? There's a whole bunch of other information that's different in the UK than it would be here. They've got a lot of license plate readers around, a lot more video than we do. Yep. What happened around the compound when this was happening? The second thing I'd be thinking, remember going back to March and the attempted assassination of those individuals by evidently Russian agents in the UK, Helsinki's in a week and a half. If this turns out to be, and we don't know this yet, obviously, but if this turns out to be something similar to what happens in March, there's going to be a phone call from Prime Minister Theresa May to the President of the United States. Yeah, I got to believe saying, stand up. you yeah. got to stand up for us. Listen, I, I spoke as recently as this morning with, with, a, with a European leader who brought up, and this prior to, to this news today, brought up that Skripal poisoning as, a, as really a game changer in terms of the West's relationship with Russia and the level of aggression that Russia was willing to, to exercise, poisoning uh, someone on UK soil, not within Russia's border areas in, in Ukraine, whatever, but in the UK, that their view of that was that was truly a qualitative step uh, further. If you were to have a second incident like that, uh, explain the repercussions. I think you have to put this the, the, the question you're asking in context. First, typically, NATO allies, particularly the Brits, would look to the Americans and say, you got to be in the lead. you got to be in the lead, not only because you are the leader of NATO, but because you have a conversation coming up, potentially one-on-one -on -one with Vladimir Putin, you got to carry the water. But the context here is going into conversations where the president has publicly shamed the Europeans about how much they contribute to NATO, has shamed the G7 states about things like trade. They've got to go into this saying, can we trust the president to walk into a conversation with our potentially key, key adversary in Europe and carry the water for us? And I suspect they're going to say, no, we can't. Well, a week after this president raised doubts again about Russia's involvement and interference in the U.S. election, which every U.S. intelligence agency and, and, and a Republican-led Senate Intelligence Committee uh, reiterated just yesterday that, that Russia was behind it. Uh, has Russia, in your experience, ever been, and again, assuming this is tied to Russia, but it is a Russian-made military nerve agent, has Russia ever been this brazen in terms of its exercise of power and, and violence abroad, if this is indeed tied to the previous poisoning? Sure. Litvinenko, mm. murdered by a material, a, a, a nuclear-based material. Yep. Polonium. This Polonium. Back, Polonium. This goes back, I'm going to try to remember here, roughly a decade. I know his widow. She was, you know, she was traumatized by this incident. He had a young son. That was done on U.K. soil. And remember, 
in the wake of that, in the past few years, you've had political opponents murder in Moscow. So if you think Vladimir Putin either learned a lesson yeah. or that he's got a new life that he's leading, not going to happen. Boris Nemtsov murdered yeah. in the shadow of the Kremlin. Now, Aaron McLaughlin, are you learning any more details before we go? Well, uh, you know, about the condition of the couple, Jim, authorities are saying they are currently in critical condition. But I think it's important all this to point out when this initially happened, when authorities initially responded to this incident, they thought it was the product of a drug overdose. This is a, a local British couple. There, there is a drug problem, according to residents I've been talking to uh, in this area. Now, uh, that, that, that uh, was their speculation on Saturday. Now it's Wednesday and now they're saying Novichok. So uh, the question is what happened between now and then led them to this conclusion?